everyone, Lights and Gear is back with another video, and I have a Soonfire flashlight to talk about today. I know Soonfire has been around for a little while, but I have not yet until, well, I have not until now had any of their flashlights, but this happens to be one which they were uh, nice enough to let me try. This is the VS37GT. Now, this actually may have been out for a little while already, but it had, um, up until at least this recording, it didn't have any reviews on Amazon as of yet. It may now or later on when you're watching this video, it probably will. But um, I'm just thinking that perhaps it didn't have the greatest exposure. Um, so anyway, Soonfire does make some reasonably good lights. Uh, this light reminds me of uh, a couple of other lights. Uh, Reminds me of a of a Claris or actually of a Lumen Top, but uh, anyway, let's get to the to the light itself. Quite a substantial box, as you can probably tell. So it comes with nice packaging, and inside the light, you do get a very nice uh, belt holster here, quality, with uh, you know uh, Velcro uh, hold there, uh, Velcro close. So I mean, uh, this is good and. You also get the instruction manual right here, which gives you everything you need to know. You've also got um, um, a lanyard, and this is, uh, I'm not sure if this is adjustable, but uh, it does have uh, a spare O-ring in here, as well as a spare cover for the USB, because it is USB rechargeable. So there's a spare cover for that, and here's your USB charging cable and is, uh, it's of a pretty good length, I might add, as well. Some of them are terribly short that they give with a lot of lights, but this is, looks pretty long. Um, and here is the flashlight, and if you undo the cap, surprise, surprise, you will also find a battery in here. So that is a nice addition. It's a Soonfire 3.7 volt 18650. It's 3400 mAh, and I actually uh, had to charge the battery when I first opened the package because there was no, um, I don't know, the, 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 the voltage on it was low. And that is a little unusual. Often though they have a tab on them. Um, when they include a battery, obviously there's a tab so there's no connection during shipping. But there was no tab um, and the battery was low. So I charged it and then was very pleased with the results of that because it actually did actually put uh, more than 3400, a little bit more than 3400 in. So um, that's a good sign, at least, that the battery is of the capacity that they claim. And uh, I haven't tested it for uh, a protection circuit, but I believe it does say on here in the fine print that it does have a circuit on it. Um, I just haven't actually witnessed that yet for myself. But um, anyway, it does seem like a, a quality battery, which is good. So uh, within the tail cap, you have your uh, spring here. And... Um, there is no spring up in the head, just a solid post up there. Um, but as you can see, the, it has good travel here with the cap, good threading. And the bottom here, it is tactical, so you can get momentary light just by pressing the cap. Um, and you do have a side switch as well, so press it on and off with the tail cap and then adjust the mode with the side switch. And on the other side here is your USB connection. So pull that up, of course, and plug in your uh, charging cable. And uh, when you do that, you will actually get an illumination under the main switch. Uh, there's actually illumination under the main switch every time you turn the light on. Um, but let me look at the... Um, instruction manual here for just a moment just to get the particulars. It does use a Cree XML2U3 LED with a top output of 1060 lumens. It does have the, um, it, it's hard anodized and uh, there's your um, candle power. It has a beam distance of 376 meters. It uses a precise temperature control system to try to uh, keep the heat under control. I have not noticed, even using it on the highest mode, that there's any automatic step down. Uh, it does not seem to do that. Does not have a. It doesn't seem to have a timed uh, step down. So, and it does mention here about the uh, charging. Of course, it uh, actually says in here about a red and green battery indicator, but that isn't right. It's red and blue. 
so I'm not sure where they get the green from. It is waterproof to IPX8, so it's submersible and uh, impact resistant to one meter and uh, already gives you the 18650 battery. Of course, you can use other um, lithium batteries, two CR123s or 16340s or 18350s, but you will not be able to charge those, of course, in the light. Uh, they do mention here that there's a voltage indicator upwards of 70 to 100 percent. You'll always have a blue light underneath the indicator. As soon as it drops to below 50, the blue light will blink. When it drops to below, um, yeah, between 20 and 50, the blue light turns to red, and then the red light starts to flash if you uh, leave it in that long so that it drops to below 20 percent of voltage. So, those are your basics within the manual. Um, everything else I just mentioned is right there. Uh, oh yes, 1060 is is the highest mode. They call it ultra bright. Then you have 500 for high, 200 for medium, 60 for low, and 8 for shimmery. Or I can't really call yeah, you can't really call 8 a moonlight because usually moonlight's not more than about one lumen. So they call it shimmery at 8 lumens. And uh, runtime is pretty good too. 319 hours on the lowest mode and 137 minutes so that's like almost uh i believe that's almost four hours almost four i think so um that, that's over th it's over three hours anyway uh for even the top output and that's that's pretty darn good uh 235 minutes there on high uh, so anyway that's what you get there. Uh, flashlight again. It's on the large side. It's not terribly small. It's just over six inches long. They do put the, the pocket clip on here, but um, I'm not sure. You know, if you have a big pocket, it would have to be a pretty deep pocket to have this be able to fit in the pocket, of course. Um, at least the clip is, at least it goes deep here within the clip, and the clip is. Uh, close to the end of the light, so you're not going to get too much uh, protrusion of the light from your pocket, so that's nice. Here's the LED. The reflector is smooth and it's very deep, so that does give you a good amount of throw, a good amount of beam distance. So, as I mentioned before, as soon as you turn it on, you'll get the blue light here, and that will tell you that uh, you have good battery power when it's constant and you can turn it off and then do momentary light if you want just by giving it a light press it does of course have memory so wherever you turn it off in is where it will turn back on and let's take a look at the beam a little bit uh, oops a little bit better uh, here we have the shimmery mode and if I give the switch a press We'll go up to low, and then we'll go to medium, and then we'll go to high, and then we'll go to the highest mode, ultra bright as they're calling it. I like to call it, well, it's usually turbo in a lot of lights, but here they call it ultra bright. You can see the beam on this, which is, uh, if you can make it out on the camera, which is very, it's pretty focused. Um, and again, we are in the top mode. If I just press it again, of course, I go down to shimmery once again. And even with that, as you can see here, with a few feet ahead, you get good, you get, you get very good coverage, even on the lowest mode. So shimmery, low, medium, high, and the very, the very bright. And if you want, uh, the flashing modes, strobe, etc. All you do is press and hold the side switch from any mode you happen to be in, and then you get strobe, and it's actually a variable strobe too. So if you shine that in somebody's face, if you have to use it for any reason, it'll send them into a into a tizzy, you know. So it's variable strobe, and then one press from strobe gets you to SOS, and um, SOS actually drops in output. Um, it, SOS is not as bright as, um, as strobe is. And then if you just press it from, from SOS, 
it'll go back to a previous mode. And then if you keep pressing it, it'll just go back and recycle through the flashing modes. So the only way to actually get it back to a regular, uh, to the regular sequence is to press and hold, which is what I just did. I just pressed and hold the switch, pressed and held the switch, and now it's back to the regular cycling mode here. So that's how that works. Um, and it also has instant access to the highest mode at any point in any of the first uh, three or four levels. You can double click and then you get to instant ultra bright with the double click. And then pressing it again, it'll go back down to shimmery. So I think you can see that it's a, a pretty useful light. It's uh, certainly good for most uh, activities. It's not terribly, terribly low on the, on the lowest mode. It's still good enough to see and good enough to do just about anything in inside the house or any, anything else that's uh, any other interior lighting that you'd need to do. It's certainly good for that. Um, and I believe, no, I didn't quite mention before about the charging portion of it. If, um, if you go and press or if you go and uh, connect the um, the USB, you'll get um, the illumination under the under the uh, under the switch here. So put the USB in, and uh, you'll get a um, a flashing red light. But you have to actually turn the light on in order to in order for it to work. A lot of flashlights work that way. So you'll plug in the USB, then turn the light on by clicking the the, the tail switch. And then, because if you don't turn it on, you'll just get a blue light in here. You'll get a blue solid light as soon as you plug the USB in. It'll just be blue and solid. So it won't actually be charging until you click the switch on. Then it will flash in red to show that it is charging. And then when that charge is finished, it will then go solid blue. And then you can unplug the USB. But even then, after you do unplug it and the charge is finished, you'll still get the blue light in here. The blue light will still be on because technically the light will still be on because you've clicked it on to start the process. So when you unplug the USB and the charge is done, technically it's still on. So the blue light is still lit. So you can either press the switch and, and, you know, and get light or you can turn it off at the, at the rear press it a couple of times, click it on, click it off, whatever, just to make sure that it is actually off-off so you're not draining the battery. So that's just uh, something to be aware of, and you can see pictures of that if that interests you on my written review on my website at lightsandgear.com where I've done the written review, so you can see the, the, the shots of the, uh, of the illuminated dial here and uh, read more about the... Uh, the after charge effect there if it wasn't if it wasn't uh, clear to you at all uh, reading about it will make it a little clearer I hope anyway that's the uh, basics of the light obviously you know it has the um, sort of a, what they call that the crenellated bezel or however they sculpted or whatever so this would be good for uh, attack uh, for self-defense or for breaking glass or something like that it's it's a good light it does have uh, many of the same functions as uh, some of the more uh, some of the more well-known manufacturers out there today, and uh, um, I think they put out a quality product. Uh, they were nice enough to send it to me to check it out, so you can uh, pick one up if you like at the link that I have below in the description, and the same l the description link is also in on my written review. Uh, so you will have the opportunity to get one there if you'd like to. Leave questions and comments if you need to, and hope you've enjoyed the video. And we'll see you next time with more. Thanks. Thanks for watching.